Vodafone is one of a number of major mobile operators lighting a fire right now underneath the open RAN market with its trials, deployments, and general support of the broader ecosystem. So I'm talking today to Diego Tenorio. He is head of group network architecture at Vodafone and chairman of the Telecom Infra Project. So Diego, thanks for joining us today. Um, can you just tell us what is Vodafone's Open RAN strategy and where is Vodafone in its Open RAN timeline? My pleasure to be here um, with you today. So what is our Open RAN strategy? Our strategy is to develop uh, and to grow Open RAN ecosystem to the point it becomes an alternative supplier equivalent to the current incumbents. Uh, similar performance and um, with a similar portfolio. And it's very important that it covers and it addresses all generations from 2G all, all the way to 5G, um, which is not where we are today, particularly on 5G, but we have no doubt that we will get there. Uh, and whereabouts is Vodafone with its, its trials, its deployments, its plans? So we started a trial in the technology a few years back. And um, as you know, we've been um, public about it. We had a trial, a uh, sizable trial in Turkey that's been taking commercial traffic for longer than 18 months now. Um, I think we acquired a very important experience. We were, um, I think, among the first operators, if not the first operator to bring Open Run to Europe as well. We announced trials in Ireland and in the UK. I think this summer we announced the first site on air in the UK. And earlier this week, we announced that we are actually rolling out to a significant proportion of the UK network that will happen over the next few years. So where are we with the technology? We think it's ready to take on rural areas, um, countryside, uh, 4G traffic, 2G traffic. Mm, not so much with 5G just yet, which you will need before you take on urban areas. But as I was saying before, we have no doubt that we will get there. So how do you think the availability of, of cost efficient and carrier grade open RAN technology will impact Vodafone and the telco ecosystem? Well, the ecosystem, particularly when you uh, look at the radio ecosystem, I think has ranked in options to a point that we definitely need um, to grow the number of suppliers. We need more alternatives. I think uh, once we have open run um, fully ready, it will it will bring very important um, alternative choices to the ecosystem. Uh, that will eventually uh, turn into, uh, I think, a total cost of ownership uh, reduction, which uh, not just through commercial kind of competition, but more importantly, through a speed up innovation uh, I think will will be for the benefit of the whole industry. Okay. So, I mean, there's an awful lot of chat at the moment about Open RAN, a lot of companies talking about their strategies. But, but where are we in the development um, of Open RAN capabilities? Uh, how close is the industry to delivering and enabling carrier class and cost efficient Open RAN technology to mobile operators like Vodafone? We are very close. I mean, we are at a point on which we thought it's um, very important to start throwing revenue into the ecosystem for accelerating the, um, the growth and the development. Um, as I was saying before, the 4G performance and the 4G um, capacity that you, you can get out of several of the open run solutions that are available uh, is good enough to take on rural areas, even suburban in some cases. Um, for the further development that the um, industry needs to do until 5G massive MIMO becomes available and comparable to incumbent vendor solution, uh, I think it'd be great if the industry starts adopting um, open run solutions, start rolling them out, start um, making uh, revenue flowing into the different companies so that they can um, they can make affordable and sustainable investment in accelerating that development. So is it fair to say it's probably be probably be going to be quite a few years until we get full equivalence uh, across 5G uh, and all the generations of mobile technology? Because just to get the time 
frames clear for, for people watching this sector? This isn't something that's just going to happen overnight, is it? This is not going to happen overnight. I think 5G Massive MIMO in particular is a complex problem to crack. It will require not just a lot of software development, but also hardware. And in particular, uh, semiconductor, probably we will need um, new solutions to be developed uh, in terms of chipset that are powering uh, those efficient, you know, super complex radios. That is it's difficult to say how long that is going to take it maybe you know um as little as maybe 12 months 18 months to a full solution it can be later if the adoption um, is is more slow in the industry that is why i think it's important that all other operators join us and follow us in uh, the early rollout of open run solutions i think uh, the investment and the development will accelerate with that um, so obviously we're talking about the radio access network here, but how important is what's going on in terms of disaggregation in the RAM to the broader telco architecture and the changes going on there? Will, will this have an impact on the on the broader telco network? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think of uh, the virtualization of the core, that's a movement that started a number of years ago. And now we're talking about cloud native solutions. We're talking about containers. If you look at what TIP is doing, um, you will see that we've uh, actually uh, developed a lot of solutions that disaggregate also the transport network. And, and we do have some commercial rollout uh, for that as well. The benefits are very similar uh, to the ones in the radio in terms of a richer ecosystem, in terms of you being able to tap onto a wider ecosystem, more companies, smaller companies bringing um, innovation and streamlining the whole supply chain. That is very similar. It also brings um, eventually similar benefit to the total cost of ownership as well. And the use of off-the-shelf hardware is one element into that. So when it happens on the radio, it's not very dissimilar to the rest of uh, the movement that has happened across transport or core. It's just the radio is probably a more, it's been traditionally a more proprietary more difficult problem to crack with um, more need for acceleration, uh, different semiconductor um, technology altogether. It's just a more demanding, I think, um, part of the network. But now it's finally happening. The disaggregation is not something unknown to the industry. It's been going on uh, you know, for years, for decades, and it's finally, uh, finally arriving in, to the radio. At the moment on which, uh, as I was saying before, is, is probably essential in terms of enriching the ecosystem with more options and with alternative suppliers. So what does Vodafone need, uh, looking forward to the next year, 2021, what does Vodafone need from the Open RAN ecosystem? What, what's the next big hurdle to overcome? Uh, and what role can organizations such as the ORAN Alliance and TIP, as you mentioned, what role can they play in, in helping to develop things further? So as, as we said earlier this week, we are committing to the rollout of uh, 2,600 sites in the UK. That is just the start. We plan to, of course, expand that to other countries in the future, depending on the developments, depending on the local conditions. Um, um, the help that the local markets may actually give us. Um, that commitment may also expand in the UK, depending on the progress that we make with the development of uh, solutions like 5G FTD, 5G TDD, Massive MIMO. Um, we're going to choose supplier in 2021 for the UK. We will start rollout after that. It may take us until 2027 uh, to complete. Um, and uh, along the way, we may expand the territory where we are planning to roll out Open RAN if the right solutions are there. Now, what are those? Well, uh, I'll insist once again, the 5G Massive MIMO is probably the most difficult problem to crack. Once you have a 5G Massive MIMO that can compete with incumbent vendor solution in performance, in capacity and in cost, then nothing will stop open run to actually acquire a, a bigger market share and that's one thing that we do need from the ecosystem for that to be true 
it's not just software development that we're going to need. We're going to need a, a whole new set of solutions from a chipset industry. Um, and that is currently, I think, a gap. And that could be an interesting um, part where Europe can um, play a role. In particular, um, I think in the UK, where we are starting, we are suggesting that that is a fantastic opportunity if um, the government, if the industry wants to invest in, um, in standing up and providing a piece of the puzzle. That would be, I think, um, a great outcome. Um, how is Oran and TIP helping this? Well, I think both are essential to this effort. I think without Oran, we would not have specification that suppliers can uh, work against. So that has been a fundamental, I think, propeller of the open run. And similarly, uh, what TIP is doing is making life easier for all suppliers and operators by, by providing a global set of specifications that prevents fragmentation. So even with the ORAN specification and knowing what it is that you have to develop in terms of interfaces across the different radio blocks, if we're talking um, about open run, there would be one million, you know, different ways of assemble a base station. Um, and if not aligned and defragmented and, and if not, you know, consistently specified at system level, I think the effort would be um, absolutely, uh, you know, unreachable for any supplier to actually build a base station that more than just one operator is going to buy. So it is through, um, um, uh, organisms like TIP, that we are getting a good kind of solid global specification that operators can then endorse to actually simply ask the same thing for the suppliers to uh, develop, which uh, I think is extremely, uh, extremely important, particularly because at the beginning, these open run volumes are going to be small compared to incumbents. So if we want to drive costs down quickly, I think the best thing that we can do is to provide consistency in the specification so that, you know, suppliers can aggregate volumes more quickly. Okay. So uh, how are these developments then changing the telecom standards uh, and specifications landscape? Are organizations such as the 3GPP still going to be as important or is it about sort of mixing and matching what happens in organizations like 3GPP uh, and the kind of blueprints and specs that come out of TIP and ORAN? So 3GPP, I think, uh, will keep its absolutely um, instrumental role in, in, in setting up the standards that, that allows the terminal to work with the radio and the radio with the core. ORAN will uh, and is specifying the interfaces of subsystems like the RAN so that different you know, elements like radios and baseband can work even if you use different suppliers. And then TIP will provide consistency to the system level specification so that what typically an operator would request for suppliers to provide through RFQs or RFIs are actually uh, you know, a consistent set of requirements so that when a small supplier has to develop an open run solution, they know that that is going to be good enough for Vodafone as well as for Telefonica or Verizon or Rakuten in Japan, because it's essentially the same development. And I, I think that is very important. There is also, I think, um, a fundamental change in the way that the telecom industry will work um, through the adoption of open run which is the role of the operator will become much more active into the development. And that is a change. So by, even if we specify, you know, consistent system level, um, base station for the suppliers to provide, we are saying that open run will allow for mix and match so that you as an operator, we select radios that will work with, um, a third time CPU, supplier, and then you will use the software from a different vendor. Okay. So to start with, that will require a level of system integration that is unknown to the industry so far. 
So it's not like buying a completely, you know, proprietary base station that you were buying from one of the incumbent suppliers. There is a lot of integration effort that you'll have to do probably yourself. Now, there is also the need for coordination across different um, operators or different integration hubs, be it an operator or even a, a system integrator. And um, I think organisms like TIP can help that coordination and they can become um, the marketplace where the different actors are contributing their system integration efforts so that there is no duplication in the industry. I think that going forward, that is going to be a fundamental uh, enabler of uh, an efficient open run solution as well. Absolutely. And I think we're seeing more and more of that as uh, developments such as Open RAN, uh, you know, gain traction in the market. Um, and you mentioned earlier the, the importance of, of new developments and, and new R&D in the chipset sector. But is Open RAN going to be, do you think, a, a catalyst for even broader and greater innovation in the telecom sector? And is there a way, I mean, you mentioned there about operators playing a more active role. Is there, is there a way that operators, maybe other organizations, can play a more active role in supporting new startups and companies that are innovating in this sector so that they can be almost guaranteed time enough to develop the technology that's needed? Absolutely, yes. Um, I think you, you, you're spot on. So for the start, Open Run will open the door to um, to companies that were not big enough to contribute to the ecosystem before, or they were simply gated through incumbent suppliers, and then the pace of innovation was adjusted to the status quo of the industry. But when you open and you can tap onto a much wider ecosystem and giving way to small companies, very specialized on, you know, specific parts of the system, be it, um, as we were saying before, maybe a chipset that makes Massive MIMO better, or maybe a software piece that makes your scheduler work particularly well. And you know that Open Run through the ORAN specification has a fantastic interface that's called the RIC, the real, um, the real time interface up there that allows third party applications to run as part of your base station. So that is just an example on how you can bring innovation into the, the run, which is much richer and reaching out much farther than ever before when the, the systems were proprietary. Now, for that to be true and for that to work, both operators as well as the industry itself, regulators, government, need to, I think, align and make the most out of this opportunity. When you look at the current set of suppliers, there are very, very few that are actually coming from Europe, which is something that I think European markets may want to actually sort out or improve through um, investment, through funding. I think there is a huge opportunity to create new players um, and to speed up the whole ecosystem indeed. Excellent. Well, this is undoubtedly one of the most exciting areas in the telecom and communications sector right now. So, Diego, thanks for sharing your thoughts today and telling us how Vodafone is involved in all of this. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.